or fall? Oh, is Something that just coming through the air? Running water. Oh, it's not in my place. Bruce and Barb, are you close to ready? Yes. Oh, we're always ready. We're ready. Yeah. <clears throat> Ever ready. <laughs> Patty, you doing okay? You about ready? I'm good. Less than a minute. I think if everybody's ready, we're going to get started. We light our chalice today with a Christmas star in the sky, and we honor the light of a long ago star, which promised love and welcome to all people everywhere. May we live up to that promise today and every day. My name is Patty Notch, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Des Moines and Merry Christmas. We are going to start the evening off right by decking the hall, helped out by the First Unitarian Church Choir. Please keep all mics muted and join in singing Deck the Halls. The words will be in the chat screen. At least they will in just a second. Well, we're having a technical glitch here. We go live. Bruce, can you do deck the halls? Sure. Join the 
old year passes all along, 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 along. Hail the new year, lads and lasses, all along, 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 along. Sing we joyous all together, all along, 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 along. Heedless of the wind and weather, all along, along, along. Thank you so much, Bruce and Barb. Sorry about that. YouTube was being challenging. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Merry Christmas, and welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Des Moines. I'm Reverend Amy Petrie Shaw. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I'm speaking to you now from land that's the traditional territory of the indigenous Iowa people. You've already met Patty. Barb Martin is our song leader, and Bruce Martin is our pianist. Uh, Lyra Halston, our membership coordinator, is here with us tonight. So if you'd like to be connected um, to our online groups or want more information, please talk to her through the email address she's going to put in the chat. And tonight we're going to haul out the holly and deck the halls and jingle the bells and celebrate the season. So come and let us be in community together. We may not have reindeer or a sleigh, but we have each other. Please keep your microphones muted during the entire service. After the service, everyone's welcome to turn your mics on and join us in some brief breakout rooms. Our next song this evening will be Jingle Bells. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. And <laughs> Thank you. We're going to have a special piece right now. Some of our youngest members have spent this year in Sing and Play the UU Way. It's a music and theater class led by William Esty and Nancy Brott. And each week they sing and they learn some basic acting tips. And they do exercises that involve acting. And some of them agreed to help William put together a video of Clement Moore's famous poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, for tonight's service. Please bear in mind that we spared no expense <laughs> for the props in this video, and I mean that exactly the way it sounded. <laughs> so William and the Sing and Play crew are going to take it away here in a minute. We have Greta Hayes, Quentin Hayes, Dominic Berardi, Dante Berardi, Joanna Chang, Jackson Craig and Maisie Craig, who helped to do this video. So hang on just a minute and we'll get this up. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just drinking my fair trade coffee while listening to Ask Me Another and NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia in front of my roaring fireplace for a moment. I'm Will Esty, and together with Nancy Brott, who you currently hear on piano, we have had the pleasure of teaching your youths in the UU Sing and Play classroom over the past few months. It's been a hectic year for us. 
So we in the Sing and Play classroom wanted to put together a project that would remind everyone that this is a time for joy, family, and having a little bit more fun than usual. We figure if you can't beat the Zoom, join it. So please enjoy the UU Sing and Play classroom of the First Unitarian Church of Des Moines, Iowa's was a Zoom before Christmas. <clears throat> "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter that I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw up the sash, the moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, on Geese, on Gus, on Paula and Penny, now Nicky, now Dippy, now Marsh, and on Jenny. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, take to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkle, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished in ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was done up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face, and a round little belly that shook when he 
laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a turn of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings. Then turned with a jerk, and laying a finger beside of his nose, giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Will, and thank you, Sing and Play Crew, and thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Santa Claus. <laughs> in honor of a baby born in a manger who reminds us that poverty and need don't mean shame and that all people need help sometimes, we're going to collect our offering this evening the offering will be given and received through the link in the chat. And uh, one half of the electronic plate goes to the internal social, social justice programs of the church and one half to our Faith in Action Partners, Planned Parenthood and Central Iowa Immigrant Support Coalition. Bruce, you're muted. The reading this evening is entitled The Letter from a Girl Called Zippy by Haven Kimmel. For years, I was thrilled to receive one present from Santa, although when I was four, I discovered that one present doesn't leave a child much to fall back on. That year, my parents bought me a gray stuffed dog that had a music box inside. 
in the sequence of pictures taken just after we opened our gifts. I am holding my dog close to me, obviously thrilled by it. In the next, my sister is holding it and I am looking at it with my head cocked, confused. In the last, the dog is completely gone and I am playing with the box it came in. I had just finished sneezing and the fur of the dog, which came off in handfuls when touched, is lying all around me on the floor. I was always grateful for my present because of something my dad told me. I asked him what he liked to play with when he was a little boy. He managed to look both wistful and brave. Oh, honey, we didn't really have any toys when I was a little boy. He went on to explain that when he was a child, there was a depression, which I understood perfectly well because sometimes my own mother didn't get up off the couch for days. She would sit eating pork rinds and reading science fiction novels. Well, I pursued flabbergasted, what about at Christmas time? He looked off into the distance, back into his long, long walk to school. I was happy just to get an orange. That was the most insane piece of news I had ever heard in my life. An orange was the opposite of a present. It was no different than saying, I'm just happy to get a baked potato, or I was happy just to have a floor. I felt a little shiver in my shoes. I would never be happy to get an orange. I didn't want an orange anywhere near me on Christmas morning. Not the color or the smell or even anything that began with the letter O. So what if my stuffed dog molted and gave me an upper respiratory illness? At least Santa remembered me and at least I didn't have to eat it. We usually spent Christmas Eve with my best friend Rose and her family. Rose's parents, William and Joyce, were the only sophisticated people in my town. They were Catholic. They had traveled to Acapulco. Joyce sometimes wore glamorous, flowery dresses with hats. They were the undisputed masters of Christmas. My mother used to refer to them admiringly, admiringly as the social liege lords of our little province, their power crystallizing with their Christmas Eve party. To be invited was like grace. I remember walking in the snow under the muted light of the streetlights, both of my parents dressed up in the best they had. Inside their house, it was all warmth and loud adult voices and let me take your coats. Bob, the eggnog is in the dining room. There were all kinds of unrecognizable foods in miniature and a little gold umbrella shaped thing that held gold swords for piercing the exotic foods. One crystal bowl held a gray paste that Rose swore to me was made of goose liver. She would not deny it even after I hit her for lying. And then in the living room, I saw the tree. It was enormous and sat directly on the floor instead of on a table as ours did. This was a thing with both depth and circumference and it smelled of pine rather than like the back of my parents' closet. Santa had not even come yet but there were dozens of presents under the tree, including a basket of nuts with a nutcracker and another with, oh my God, oranges. I feared for my friends and I also wanted to be them. I wanted such a tree in my house and so many presents that they could simply be scattered about. It is an amazing moment when one goes from being grateful for what one has to longing for what is impossible. Our next song is a song that most of you will know about one little reindeer who did the impossible. Please keep your mics muted 
and join in singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The words will be in the chat. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Dixon, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him Joining in the reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. You'll go down in his story. Karen Kramer and our UCDSM choir have been amazingly busy this holiday season. And we're going to get to hear one of the lovely pieces they've recorded right now. It's called Lule Lule. If you'll give me just a moment, I'll have it on. Our second lesson today continues from the letter from a girl called Zippy by Haven Kimmel. The year I got the letter, I asked for a piano for Christmas. It was all I could think of, a piano, a piano, a piano. I had no idea what was compelling me in this desire, but it went straight to my heart. And I feared for myself if Santa didn't comply. 
I wanted a piano more than life itself, but I also had asked Santa for a doll with two buttons, one that made it be a real baby and one that turned it back into a doll. I was gambling. If I didn't get the piano, at least I'd get the baby and then I'd have something to live for. My piano obsession was written in worry lines all over my parents' faces. I figured they were worried about where we would put it. I assured them I'd be happy to give up my cot and sleep inside the piano if necessary, but they said nothing. I told them we could put it in the living room, which we couldn't afford to heat in the winter, and, and I would cut the fingertips out of all my gloves and play in there. Silence. As Christmas Eve drew closer, I, I also started to feel nervous. It seemed that nobody was holding out any hope for this one. Even though I'd wished as hard as I, I, I could wish, and I'd even begun praying to Santa instead of Jesus in church on Sunday. On Christmas Eve, watching my parents get dressed for the party, I felt my stomach turn over with dread. I trudged despondently behind my parents all the way to Rose's house. My burden was already so heavy and I, I haven't even been faced with the heat and beauty and bounty that William and Joyce provided for their children. At one point under the street light in front of the post office, my mom turned her head back toward me and said, no matter how much it hurts, try to be gracious, sweetheart. Yes, ma'am, I said. Rose met us at the door and she grabbed my hand before I could take off my coat and hat. Come quick, you've got to see the early Christmas presents we got. We stopped at the Christmas tree and she showed me a Santa about a foot tall made out of chocolate. The real present was up in her room, she said, dragging me up the stairs. She led me into her room with her hands over my eyes, positioned me and then pulled them away shouting, okay, look. It was a piano. Well, not exactly a piano, more like an organ and not like a church organ. This was a little organ that sat on the floor and it didn't have a full keyboard, just two octaves and buttons. You push for the chords, but it, it might as well have been a piano. I wondered if it would work if I threw up on it. I wondered what would happen to the beautiful little white keys if I... Oh, I wondered what I was supposed to do with myself now. And look, Rose said it came with a book of Christmas songs. I can't play any of them yet, but I bet you could. And then we could sing them here. You just play the notes by the number written with this hand. And then the other hand, you press the chord button. You try. I was nodding. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly clear what I was supposed to do. And then I was sitting on the floor with my legs crossed playing, oh, come all ye faithful except that this book had both the English and the Latin, which Rose already knew and chose to sing Latin. I had never heard such a thing in my life. It sounded beautiful and strange. And when we reached the end of the song, I had tears in my eyes, but I would have stuck a pin in my own eardrum before I would have cried in front of Rose. I went downstairs to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror at my saddest self my hair up all over my head and a smear of something charcoal on one cheek. Part of my shirt collar was tucked under. I had a gray ring around my neck. Some of my permanent teeth hadn't come in yet, but the, the two front ones had come in and overlapping and big like horse teeth. Who would give something so fine as a miniature piano to me? Outside the bathroom door, I could hear my parents conferring. It had begun to snow quite hard and dad was saying he thought he ought to go home and get the truck so that mom and I wouldn't have to walk home later. I waited till he was gone and then came out of the bathroom where my mom was standing waiting for me. I slammed my head into her shoulder, choking back a sob. They gave her a piano, I said miserably. I know. How could they? William and Joyce didn't love me, but I thought they cared a little bit. I'm sure they didn't mean to hurt your feelings, she said, trying fruitlessly to smooth down my wicked hair. She kissed me on the top of the head and sent me back upstairs, and Rose and I sang some more carols and 
played our favorite game, the Evil Queen. It didn't do much good. I was despondent by the time we put on our coat to leave. As we got into dad's warm truck, my parents said nothing about my despair. And I swore to myself I would never comment on it again either. So my best friend got the one thing I wanted, the one thing I could never have. So what if when she woke up in the morning, there would be presents spread out across the living room so far that the children would have to start opening presents in the hallway? What was all of this to me? Please join in singing Away in the Manger. The words will be in the chat. Please keep your mics muted. From a Girl Called Zippy by Haven Kimmel. Our house looked cold, the lights from our aluminum tree feeble. In the living room we could see our breath. I took off my coat and boots and started to turn left to go straight into the warm den, but my dad stopped me and eased me deeper into the living room. And there, in front of our sweet little tree stood a piano. Not a piano exactly, more like an organ. Not a church-sized organ, but one much, much bigger than roses. It stood on legs. It had its own bench. It probably had four octave and three music books. And propped up on the music was a letter written in script so ancient it wobbled, big loopy handwriting that could only come from a very shy, very strange man. It read, Dear child, I hope you don't mind that I delivered this a day early, but I thought you might like to have it tonight. I'm sorry I can't also bring you the doll, but to be honest, no one has ever before made such a request. My elves are working on it, but it might be a long time before we get it just right. Thank you for not losing faith. Thank you for being so brave tonight. Love, Santa. Please keep your mics muted and join us in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. We'll be doing two verses plus the Latin verse all with the traditional words. The words will be in the chat. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye. 
Thank you, Barb and Bruce. Christmas is a traditional holiday. It's traditionally a time for stories. And I want to tell you a great one now. It's from Robert Fogum's book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And it's called Hong Duck, the One Man Christmas Choir. And Fogum writes, a Sunday afternoon it was, some days before Christmas, with rain, with wind, with cold. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, fa la 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 la. This uh, holy hour was jarred by a pounding at the door. Now what? Deep sigh. Opening it, resigned to accept whatever bad news lies in wait, I am, well, nonplussed a rather small person in a cheap Santa Claus mask, carrying a big brown paper bag out thrust. Trick or treat! What? Trick or treat! Tongue-tied, I stare, and he shakes the bag at me. And dumbly, I fish out my wallet and find a dollar and drop it in the bag. The mask lifts, and it's an Asian kid with this $10 grin taking up most of his face. Want to hear some caroling? He asks in sing-song English. I know him now. He belongs to a family settled into the neighborhood by Quakers last year. Boat people, Vietnamese, I believe. Refugees. He, he stopped by at Halloween with his sisters and brother, and I filled their bags. Hong Duck is his name. He's, he's maybe eight. Want to hear some caroling? Sure. Where's the choir? I'm it, he says. And he launches forth with an up-tempo rendition of Jingle Bells at full lung power. This was followed by an equally enthusiastic rendering of what I swear sounded like Hark the Hairy Angels Sing. And finally, soft voice, reverential, he sang Silent Night. Head back, eyes closed from the bottom of his heart. He poured out the last stains of sleep in heavenly peace into the gathering night. Wet-eyed and, and dumbstruck by his performance, I pulled out a $5 bill from my wallet and dropped it in that paper bag. In return... He produced half a candy cane from his pocket and very solemnly handed it to me. Flashing that $10 grin, he turned and ran from the porch, shouted, God bless you, and then trick or treat. And, and he was gone. Who was that masked kid? Hong Duck, the one man choir, delivering Christmas door to door. I confess I'm... I'm usually a little confused about Christmas. It's never made a lot of sense to me. It's unreal. Singing about riding in a one-horse open sleigh is ludicrous. I've never seen one, much less ridden in one. Never roasted chestnuts by an open fire. Wouldn't know how to if I had one, and I, I hear they're no big deal anyway. Wandering wise men raise my suspicions, and shepherds who spend their life hanging about with sheep are a little strange. 
I've never seen an angel either. And my experience with virgins is really limited. The appearance of a newborn king doesn't interest me. I'd soon settle for some other president. Babies and reindeer both, uh, well, they smell. I've been around them both and I know. The little town of Bethlehem is a pit, according to those who've been there. Singing about things I've never seen or done or wanted, dreaming of a white Christmas I've never known. Christmas isn't very real, and, and yet I'm too old to believe in it and too young to give it up. I'm too cynical to get into it and too needy to stay out of it. Trick or treat. <laughs> After I shut the door came the hysteria, laughter and tears and that funny feeling you get when you know that once again, Christmas has come to you. Right down the chimney of my midwinter hovel came St. Hong Duck. He's confused about the details like me, but he's very clear about the spirit of the season. It's an excuse to let go and celebrate, to throw yourself into the holiday with all you have, whoever you are, wherever you are. I'm it, says he. Where's Christmas, I ask myself. I'm it, comes the echo. I'm it. Head back, eyes closed, voice raised, and whatever song I can muster the courage to sing. God, it is said, once sent a child upon some starry night that the world might know hope and joy. I'm not sure I quite believe in all the baggage heaped on that story during 2,000 years. But I am sure that I believe in Hong Duck, the one-man Christmas choir shouting trick-or-treat door-to-door. I don't know who or what sent him, but I know I'm tricked through the whimsical mischief of fate into joining the choir that sings of joy and hope. Through a child, I've been treated to Christmas. I love that story because it takes away, oh, it takes away so much. It reminds me to take away all the layers that have been added to the Christmas story over the last 2,020 years to remember that through a child I've been treated to Christmas. A tiny refugee child born to brown-skinned unmarried refugee parents. A kid born to a mother whose baby's daddy was not the same thing as the guy walking next to her. The man she was going to marry. A child called Emmanuel, which translates to God with us, a child called Jesus. You know, in, in 1809, a traveler passing through Kentucky stopped at Hanks's store and asked, anything happening around here lately? And he got told, no, nothing ever happens around here. Just a baby born out the Lincoln cabin last night, that's all. Just a baby in the Lincoln cabin, Abraham Lincoln. Just a baby in a manger, Jesus of Nazareth. You never know what may happen in the world because just a baby was born. In Bethlehem, the innkeeper didn't know who he was turning away. Even Mary couldn't fully imagine what was meant by that night. What child is this? That's the question the world asks over and over. Who's this kid? Is this a special kid? Is this a kid the angels are waiting for? Is this a kid that'll bring peace? Jesus didn't come as some kind of warrior leading a vast army. He didn't throw thunderbolts to smite anybody into dust. He was born in a barn, human. He grew up and he said, I'm it, <clears throat> I'm it. Listen, I'll tell you a better way. I'll tell you a better story. He said, love your neighbor and listen, this is the important bit. They're all your neighbors. They're all your neighbors. So see me in every face, because what you do to them, what you do to the least of them, the worst of them, 
you do to me. Then he asked one more thing. You do the same. Love your neighbor. You rise up and say, I'm it. No one else is coming right now. I'm it. And I'm going to sing my heart out. He asks that you recognize tonight and every night a child is born is a holy night. And you too are a holy child awaited by angels. You too can bring Christmas. Christmas is the day that light and hope are reborn in our hurt world. It's the day when love is embodied and carried out to save the rest of us from despair. It's the day when all humans recognize they're one big family and no one should be left alone outside the door. So when the wise men come looking and when the angels search for the child so that they can sing, you get up and you say, I'm it, right here, I'm it. Emmanuel, God with us, humanity, we're it. Open your heart and welcome that idea in. You're it. On this day and every day, you be the love which has come to earth. You hear the story as your own. Rise up and say, I'm it. I'm it. And you sing. You sing. We extinguish this chalice and we carry the warmth of the Christmas star out into the world. Our final song today is number 251, Silent Night. The words will be in the chat screen. It's going to sound odd and a little bit laggy and maybe awful, but we'll sound awful together. Please unmute yourselves and sing Silent Night with us. We're going to have the choir is has recorded a version of this. Going to be playing for us, and we're going to be singing with our choir. Yes. 
so much for being together on that. I don't care how bad we sounded. We're all <laughs> tonight. We are it. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Joy to the world on this wonderful, wonderful silent night. Amen. 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 <laughs> and Bruce, would you give us one more round through Silent Night to go out on? <laughs>